digital footprint is a big thing in the case here against Richard Allen. And we're talking about the geofencing. We can talk about the pinging. But also, what about just the content of the phone, of, of, of his phone, of, of his computers, of, of anything? I mean, things like that, I imagine they have looked at. I mean, in, in I don't know, 99% of the cases that we talk about, uh, there's just a plethora of free flow of what's going through the killer's mind. And I would imagine, you know, if just this is such an odd character thing for him to go from being the CVS guy that people know and are good with to all of a sudden one day he decides to go murder these girls and do a Odinistic ritual in the woods. Maybe some Googling has gone on to determine how to do this or showing an interest or a penchant for it. It's not just a, hey, I think I'm going to go do an Odinistic ritual and kill these two girls as I'm out for a lovely walk today. Um, after leaving his mom's house. After leaving his mom's like, I mean, yeah. house. Yeah. Right. Like that's that's their story that he decides to leave his mom's house, says, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna go over to the bridge and I'm gonna find a couple of uh you know victims because yeah. I'm I'm in the mood to murder after you know I'm a 48-year-old man, show known indications of doing anything like this. There's because look, the 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 what we know is that the defense at least has alleged that nothing on his phone connects him to the girls. Mm -hmm connects him to Odinism, that nothing on any of his devices does either of those things either. Yeah. So we know that. I mean, they've stated that in their pleadings, that there is there is absolutely no evidence that Richard Allen knew any of these dudes, that Googled any kind of Odin-type stuff, yeah. had any connection to these guys, or had any connection to the girls whatsoever. So, I mean, that's, again, that's compelling. You know, like, their, their biggest challenge is going to be getting over the the – the confessions like because sure. people people have a tendency to think that that mental illness is bullshit which is crazy to me but there's plenty of people out there yeah. that just yeah. don't buy it and, and and those are the same folks that you're gonna have to try to convince that he's admitting to something that he didn't do yeah because that's the normal response from again normal human beings are like I would never confess to something that I didn't do ever. I don't care what they're doing. They could torture me all day, like for, for 10 days and I'd never confess to that. Sure, sure you wouldn't. <laughs> Until you've been tortured for months yeah, on right. end, uh, yeah. which is essentially what was going on, which is insane to me to begin with that this is like, yep, yeah, that's what they did. It's okay. You do, Bob. Business is normal. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Like, there's no yeah. accountability for this. Uh, I know. It's I know. like some, I mean, especially... I mean, there's a lot on the line here, too, with uh, with Delphi, because if he is found innocent of of all of these crimes, his uh, treatment in in jail, in prison, in all the decisions that were made out of that county, that's going to turn into a very large lawsuit uh, against everything. Um, I mean, look what happened. I mean, when you if you go back to the case uh, in Wisconsin, uh, the um, making a murderer. Um, I can't think of Stephen his Avery. What's that? Stephen Avery. Stephen Avery. Yes, I should know that. I'm from there. Um, you know, uh, <laughs> he was he was charged earlier on with another crime. Uh, ended up suing the city of Manitowoc for millions of dollars. Right before they're supposed to pay, he suddenly found guilty of another murder. Oops, we don't have to pay anymore. Which you know, again, seeing the the track record of Delphi. Wouldn't be surprising to see if that's how this plays out over the next couple of years. Uh, not to yeah. say that we haven't seen this before, but th there's just th there's a lot riding on this because uh, if they're wrong, they're really wrong and they're going to pay a heavy price for it. All the more reason to make this look that, like he did it. But again, there's so many hurdles to get over to do that. For real. Yeah, it's 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 going to be. And the one thing that was evident is going to be a hard fought trial. Yeah. You know, it's like, that was the first time I've been waiting for two years to see some actual litigation in this case, yeah. you know, cause the only thing that we had really seen was like a safekeeping hearing like last June. Mm -hmm. So in terms of actual litigation on actual motions, this is the first that I've seen any of the lawyers perform and they were all up to the task. You know, yeah. it's going to be a, a hard fought trial. Um, McClellan was chomping at the bit. You know, he was ready for his cross examinations and and he comes hard. You yeah. know, he comes hard at their witnesses. You know, he's not shy about uh, being aggressive on cross. So, 
you know, I, I fully anticipate this is going to be a, a, a very, very hard fought case. Um, you know, probably with a lot of sniping back and forth during the course of that trial, like it, it, and is as critical as I've been of Gull, uh, I, I, I give her plaudits for her allowing them uh, both sides to just litigate this shit for three days. Mm -hmm. Like we went to six 30 uh, night or day two, and then we went to eight 30 mm -hmm. on day three. So she, she let them go, yeah. you know, and she let them get their stuff in. Um, I mean, she kind of created that monster by not, not getting these things scheduled yeah. more timely, but you know, at, at the point where, where she's handling it, um, I, I thought she did a great job in terms of like letting that get litigated yeah. and we'll see, we'll see how she comes down. I, I don't anticipate that she's going to grant any of their motions. I certainly don't think she's tossing the confessions out. Uh, it, but, and I, and I do think that in a, in a limited circumstance, she's going to allow some of the third party stuff to come in, which for the defense could be a blessing, Yeah, you know, like, which would force them not to lean into that. Cause I, like, I, I get the sense that like, uh, Rosie is more of the mindset. Let's go, let's go forensics. Let's, let's destroy the timeline aspect. And I think that, uh, Baldwin is more like, I want to go after this third party thing. I think these are the guys, yep. you know what I mean? So you've got this, cause these guys are, aren't partners mm -hmm. in their private practices. So in, in every individual attorney is going to have their own concept sure. on how to try a case. So it's interesting to see. You know, they got, they've got to play nice together and try to make a cohesive, uh, you know, decision in terms of how they're going to proceed with the defense on it. But, you know, again, to me, the strongest, the strongest evidence is that forensic stuff. And that's yeah. what you lead into it. Yeah, without a doubt. Hey, thanks for checking out the video. Be sure to follow us wherever you download podcasts, and especially Apple Podcasts, where you can get advanced episode and premium content on our premium channel right there. Also, be sure to follow us on social media so you don't miss any breaking updates on the stories that matter to you most. We're on TikTok, X, Instagram, Facebook. Just search Hidden Killers Podcast with Tony Bruschi, and you'll find us right there. Again, thanks for watching.